everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and you're here for Space Week, which is starting this Sunday if you're here on the replay. It's still Space Week. On the mic today is my husband, John. Hi, guys. He's going to track me with cameras and read the live questions. So if you guys have questions during the painting and everything, he's going to make sure that those get to me. I'm so excited to have everybody here. It's an early broadcast, early live. Yes, it is. Unless you're watching on the replay, and then it's maybe it's afternoon, maybe it's evening. So all those things, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm so They're doing excited. pretty good. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah. I have today, we're going to paint this fantasy eclipse. Mm. And I say it's a fantasy because currently the totality does not cross palm trees. But I just, uh, artist, and couldn't help myself. I just was like, what would that be like? So I put this beautiful fantasy piece together. And this is all about like reds on reds and these really kind of warm colors to sort of represent, metaphorically, um, an eclipse, that sort of nighttime effect. And yet we didn't do night. It's so crazy what we did here. Mm. Or what I did here. I don't know why blaming you because it was just me in my studio alone <laughs> running amok. But I'm I'm pulling you into it with me. So this is a little small study canvas. So we're going to do this today on a nine by twelve. On a nine by twelve, and just real quick, we'll go over materials while John's okay. reading through the comments. Um, we have titanium white, Prussian blue, naphthol red medium, cad red light, alizarin crimson, Indian yellow. I have a soft-bodied black, a soft-bodied white, and of course, glazing medium to get through this painting. So uh, materials are always in the description and more information. And of course, I got up real early and made sure you had a traceable, because if you don't draw, I don't want you not to paint. What's going on in the okay. world of art today? Oh my gosh, so much over here. I was just getting all of our buttons set up. We have a pretty full house over here. We're almost we? Sherpa uh, all, already. So it's uh, we're, we're doing pretty good. We've got, we've got 260 people here, 270 people here. They just Ooh. keep coming. So it's, it's, a, it's early morning, it's afternoon, it's evening. It's and, all uh, around the world so many times. Yeah, and uh, I mean, like, we are... Uh, we're, you know, it's, it's been really interesting cause it's, uh, we're, we're here to, we're here to do our space week and <laughs> you're like morning, morning, well, mornings, I, everyone. Oh, I love putting out this alizarin crimson. I'm going to need to get another tube of that soon. Well, I, I, you know, I'm also excited cause everyone's really excited cause we're real close to 200,000 today. That is uh that's a thing. I keep getting asked if we're going to do something for 200 K and we are. It's a surprise. Yeah. There might be, we'll see how it goes today, yeah. but for sure there's something coming up for you guys because you guys are amazing. Mm -hmm. Amazing in every way. Do, 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 do. So I'm putting out all my colors. So tell, tell me what colors you've got over there. I'll pull up your picture. picture so you. this is the Indian yellow, titanium white, alizarin crimson, naphthol red, cad red light, Prussian blue. And of course, I have a little of the fluid soft body black. You could use Mars black, mm -hmm. right? I find this just helps me get some nice little soft effects out. And then I'm going to have this fluid white for stars because we got to, you know, you can see stars during an eclipse. Yes, yes, you can. So I'm going to sketch this in. Oh, wait, we have to do a wish. Oh, yes. Um, we got a, we got a wish in cause we had Shannon. Yes. For, for Shannon. She had, she was in a car accident. So we're going to put that wish in there for her. Just heal quickly. Mm -hmm. And, and a our, happy birthday to Alan. Yeah. We have a little happy birthday to Alan. And, a, and, and we, we had a lot, we had several wishes come in for, for a sensation of pain. Cause we have a lot of oh. sherpets in pain. We want to yeah, make sure we get that Relief from there. pain. So we wanted to just grab a couple of those today. I know we're, uh. And, and I wanted to say thank you to all of our light keepers out there who are capturing all those wishes and keeping them on their canvases as well, because we know that's a it's an important part of what we uh, we try to do here. Just seeing what my clip. I was just wondering what you're I'm grabbing checking there. my clip circle size. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. <laughs> First thing that I'm going to do is lay in a horizon line, okay. and this is probably the most important line in your painting. I think I'm going to lay mine in with paint. Um, that way you guys can see it, and John doesn't have to do crazy stuff to adjust the camera. You lay yours in with chalk. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to flip my canvas over and mark out um, three and a half or a little bit above a half inches from the bottom is going to be my horizon line. 
always try to make sure your horizon line on any water scene, I know you guys hear me say this all the time, is super level. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a very important part of your painting. Um, the more level it is, the more it will feel like you're looking at a distant horizon. Because water tends to level out. It's its thing. It's how it is. All right, I'm going to put in at least my... Uh, if you're wondering what this is, this is a half inch angle. And it's just going to give me a nice little edge while I'm sketching all this in. I'm going to come up here a couple inches above my horizon line and bring down some landscape, some crazy, crazy little landscape that my palm trees could be on, right? Because they need to have some place to be living. And then when I have that in the water, I'm going to bring back a wave. So what's happening is there's a current coming up and hitting this landmass. Mm -hmm. And as it comes up, just think of it in like pulsing waves, right? They come up in little pairs. They hit this landmass and start to break. And so I'm going to make a nice break. And I like to have some of the wave come forward and then go back. And then we're going to have a little bit of wave that's going to hit some shoreline here. And it's going to do the same thing. Right? So where it's hitting the shoreline, it's maybe come up far up the shoreline. And once I have that sketched in, I'm pretty happy with it. And I can start putting in my sky because I kind of know where my objects are. I'm not going to worry about putting my palm trees in now. If you're using the traceable, you certainly can. But I'm going to start putting in my sky. Okay. I like my sky, Mr. Cooney. I do too. What I'm going to pull a number 10 bright. Those, you like those big number 10s. I do like me a number 10 bright. This is a black pearl. This has a synthetic filament in it. When you're looking for acrylic brush, um, I like it when they have synthetic filaments in them because they don't hold too much water. Hmm. And interestingly enough, I'm going to do this thing where I'm almost going to tone the whole canvas with my naphthol red in this upper part. I'm just going to tone that. Toning it. This upper part, all naphthol red. And when I say toning it, I'm not trying to put on a thick application of paint or smooth application of paint by any means. Now, I will say what's really... And I'm going to do a crazy subtractive thing, too. While you're putting that in there, I'm going to tell you something really interesting. Cause we, huh. have a, we have a, a large number of Sherpettes who are out either camping or, or hoteling, preparing for the eclipse. Well, I know Stephanie B. Mm -hmm. and her husband Mark are on the eclipse. Who else is on the eclipse? Oh, my gosh. Uh, let's see here. I, I know that Ian is out going on the eclipse. Ian! Right? Oh, let's all send Ian some love and light. And let's see, I just saw uh, Becky just, is just out Just real there quick, as you're announcing people, I'm going to take my towel and do a crazy thing here, oh, guys. Show me. I'm going to subtractively rub back. You guys have never seen me do this. A little of my naphthol. And by the way, that's where I'm putting the eclipse. Ah. Ha ha ha, you did not know that was you coming. just pulled some of that out there. I did. And I'm going to get also some of my... Indian yellow, you could use cad yellow deep or Australian sienna or just cad yellow if you don't have Indian yellow. And I'm going to make sure I tone my canvas just real fast with this. Just blocking that in. Mm. Not that worried about it. Okay, go back on to who's out. Oh my, I was just reading over there. There's a lot of new people here who just joined us for the first time. And, uh, there, you know, there's, there's folks uh, in the other parts of the world who aren't going to have a chance to see the eclipse the, the same way we were we will. Um, this is sort of a unique eclipse for North America. It is. Um, because it gets to the way, the way that it just happens to cross us and the time of day. So it's, uh, that's pretty exciting. It's happening tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You can check out. There's some live eclipse feeds that you can rush to if you need up-to-the-date eclipse information after this uh, broadcast. There's yeah. a ton of them. And Brandy is, uh, she's, a, she's in a direct path. So she's like, she's like, she's I'm excited. There. Yeah. Yeah. I was, uh, we, we were, t we talked about making a, a, a trip out there to, to see it with the family. So we I'm just... taking the Indian yellow mm -hmm. and the naphthol red and I'm mixing them together. Yeah. We did 
dots and I'm putting them in the space between the red and I'm talking over John, not because I'm being impatient, but because my pain is drying. No, no, no. It's, and, it's your... and he knows that, but you might not know that at home. Sometimes people are like, you totally talked over him. And it's like, well, I got to let everybody know what the heck I'm doing. Yeah. It's... <laughs> so I'm just very loosely just brushing this up over the naphthol. And isn't it interesting how the ending nail coming up over the naphthol creates this crazy glow? Mm -hmm. It's just a cool thing that we get when we mix those two. And then I always like to return John back to his regularly scheduled program where he was talking about his planning to do a trip. I'm adding some okay. more naphthol to this, and then I'm going to get a sippy sippy, and then John is totally finished his story in peace. <laughs> oh, no, no, Marriage. no. Marriage. We... <laughs> Woo! <laughs> and actually, uh, it's, there, there, there was a there's a couple of, uh, of of relatively interesting questions about uh, eclipse stuff out here. Mm. So it, we were planning on going and taking a trip ourselves, and uh, we had purchased in advance a bunch of viewers and you know glasses and things. And it was we were really lucky because Amazon had notified us that we, that a lot of those weren't going to be safe. They weren't certified or weren't tested from some of the vendors. So they they gave us notification, but. Uh, I was lucky because we had some Thousand Oaks filters, which, uh, because I, I'm, I do a bunch of astronomy stuff. I have a yeah. telescope and stuff. So I had those left over. So we'll be using Thousand Oaks. He's a Oaks. stargazer. Yeah, we'll be using Thousand, thousand Oaks certified viewers. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so some people were asking what we're going to be using to view with. Yeah. And so we're going to be very safe and use those. We know that NASA certified those. And we, we very much recommend that you check with your eyewear and make sure it's protected because that's a nuclear laser in the sky and you can't look at it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> John's on the phone with Amazon. It's a nuclear laser. <laughs> so I mean, just can't stress enough. This, this is, I mean, you have to have proper eyewear. There's just no, no shortcutting on this one. No, I'm rinsing out my brush and I'm going to dry it off a little bit, and I'm going to take some of this Indian yellow up into my sky up here. And come around where I, you know, remove some paint and brush this around. See, I'm just doing that around. Mm -hmm. And that's going to give this faint glow up here. But it'll layer these two spaces together well. That crazy? Yeah. That's layer one of the layer sky. Layer one. Layer one. This is a very complicated sky. I won't even. I'm telling you right now, it's super complicated sky. <laughs> All right, my next color, and I'm gonna probably put out some of my golden glazing medium. Mm -hmm. So this is an extender, a slow drying extender for acrylic colors that you can glaze with. In other words, it's gonna slow down my drying time. So I'm going to just load up the naphthol, and that is, I'm going to start putting that on there, but I'm thinking I'm going to take it darker, and how I'm going to do that, watch this, for the deep, deep sky, is I'm taking a little Prussian over to my naphthol mm -hmm. and adding the glaze, and now, yep, there we go. So this is that effect I was going for to try to say that this was nighttime during the day. Oh, yeah. I certainly got excited painting all the different eclipse paintings. If you're in the Facebook group, you were you were voting on them, and that was just the ones that made it to the vote. There's been so many eclipse paintings in the studio lately. Oh yeah, there's been a bunch, man. This has been really great for me. <laughs> so notice that this is streaky here. Yeah. And that actually is something I liked. Um, sometimes I get questions from people because the streakiness makes them uncomfortable. You know, sometimes paint is transparent, like a glaze, mm -hmm. and that's the property I'm actually looking for. And sometimes it's smooth and opaque. But if you're really trying to get smooth colors that don't have any of that in it, you've got to almost do a fluid paint. Now you like the painterly nature of yes, things. I do. I like it. I like things to look like um, like they were painted, not um, not necessarily be. Super realistic. Now as I'm coming down, I'm going to get some more of my naphthol, and I'm not rinsing my brush. I'm just going to work this as I'm coming around. I may have to come back with a little of my Indian yellow. We'll see. I'm loading, loading. See how it's just on the tip of this brush? Like I'll get a little glaze, and I'll get a little naphthol, mm -hmm. and just come right there. 
I'm just going to bring this down. You know, and I'm going to kind of just dust very lightly, blending this space all in. So I do want these variables in the sky. This is like dusting. If you've ever had to just dust a color onto something or a blush, it's, it's just almost that light. And that dry brushing allows me to create another type of blending, you know, that I can really, really like. I just rinsed out my brush like you do. Like you do. And I'm going to come down here. I might pull some of this red up into my sky. And before I put in my final bank of clouds, I'm going to put in a few stars. And the reason I'm putting them in now instead of after my eclipse is in is because there wouldn't be stars in front of the eclipse, which is a really funny debate that was going on in the um, Facebook group. No, I guess if you were, uh, uh, you know, I guess if you were doing it, you know, sort of... Um, imaginatively or, or you know, yeah. fantasy wise, you could totally see, you know, you could have a... You could have it any way you want it. Yeah. It's your painting. But like, you know, and I really like when you do, uh, when like they do crescent moons. So I've got a splatter like, brush here. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. No, no, yeah. tell, tell <laughs> sorry, babe. I've got a, I just want to make sure I tell everybody what I'm doing. I've yes. got a splatter brush here and I'm dipping it in the paint and I'm rubbing it in the bristles and I'm spreading that around. And then I'm going to very, do you have a good camera on that? Yeah. Going to very lightly pull back. This is uh, my splatter brush from my uh, brush set, but you could use a stiff. That was a prototype. <laughs> yeah, this is my prototype. <laughs> okay. I have put it through some abuses. But there, I've started up my little sky. Yeah. I'm going to rinse that out. I don't leave the soaking in water ever. And this is about a one hoot, yeah? This is a one hoot. And that's why, just so you know, again, that's why I'm sort of like giving those instructions because I want to make sure if you're really new in painting, you've like got this. Because I know I've got a lot of new painters and a lot of little brushes painting with me. And I just want to make sure that we get all that stuff out. So I'm loading up my brush with the Indian uh, yellow. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to add a smidge of white to it. And I'm going to come here. And this is an interesting thing. So I'm going to make kind of like an implied distant cloud bank. I'm on the edge of my brush. You can see how there's a little white. There's a little Indian yellow. It's not all mixed perfectly together. And I'm going to wiggle. I'm going to go up and down. I'm going to brush up. And I'm trying to explain the act of being loose <laughs> while, while slowing down, which is sort of an interesting challenge. But that's what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to be loose. I'm trying not to repeat shapes, and I'm talking about little airy bits of clouds that might be going up. And now I'm going to just wiggle the brush around, and that's how I get that loose, expressive sky in there. Not fun. Mm -hmm. And it's really about sometimes you know we get so into our minds about what clouds are or not or how they look that we don't just relax and loosen up enough to just paint them. They think it looks like the skies of Arrakis. I'm so sorry I interrupted <laughs> No, 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 it's fine. They're all, everyone... No, I'm sippy, sippy, go, guy. Uh, they're like, it looks like the skies of Arrakis on Dune. Quiz that, how did that? Oh, I name. dorked out right there, didn't <laughs> I? Guess what? And just quote whole sections of the book, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, we have a joke around here. Sherpa is an arting name. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, but we did that. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I can't help myself. We just are dorks. We are such dorks. But we're doing Space Week, so that's what's fun. All right, I, so what are you doing with that? So I have this bottle. I'll tell you the width around it is. <laughs> It's diameter? It's, it's diameter. It's about an inch and a half, inch and a quarter around. Inch and a quarter, it looks like. Inch and a quarter. And, and I'm going to just trace around it because I feel like that's a pretty decent size mm -hmm. for uh, my eclipse. And then when you trace around something, you get some growth on the line. So it gets a little bigger. Because I don't freehand a great circle. I'm not even going to lie to you here. It's not my best strength. <laughs> I'm going to take a number four bright. 
and load that little bad boy up and just uh, kind of paint this in right over my little chalk line as best I can. I probably will be futzing with this in a minute, but I'm going to get that in. So this is the totality. Yes. This will last much longer than two minutes on your canvas. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. Yeah. Wait, uh, should we try to do a shirt of one of these? Yeah, we should. We should we, we'll, we'll see what everybody would like to see. I might like to see a mug of it. Oh, yeah, just something. Like All right, so we're going to let that have its little moment being there. And while that's there, having a little moment, I'm going to pick a mid-size bright, like a mid-size sedan, mm. just for space. I'm going to get a number eight. I could have gotten a number six, but I'm going to get a number eight. I'm going to change out to slightly cleaner water. And I'm going to start putting in my ocean. So I'm going to take a little of my... Uh, Prussian blue and a little of my naphtha. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to come along this back horizon line. Hold on, let me get down there. I didn't know you were going. Okay. Over. Right here, I'm going to be working okay. all through here. Got it. I'm just going to come along this dark, dark back horizon line of this water. Now, you don't. Are you using black on, black on your uh, palette over there? I have it for the sun and the palm trees, and oh, okay. it is the soft body black. You could use Mars black. You could use black gesso. But right now you're using that? Just the Prussian blue and the naphtha. Okay. No, no black in this. Now I'm taking this mixture. I might get some glazing medium on it so it's more fluid. And I'm going to just pull it down the side here. I'm going to try to keep my brush strokes pretty... Uh, level and I will go ahead and take I'll flip my brush to the edge of the bristles see so there's the thick line and the thin line I'm going to be on the thin line see how I'm brushing on the thin line yeah if I were brushing on the thick line it wouldn't give me a very nice effect would it oh yeah the thin one makes it look like it's more water reflecty yeah so I'm just mixing up the naphtha medium and that kind of gives it that Prussian. surface water look. It does. And that's something that you just might not know, like, as you're painting along, because you're just trying to figure out what the heck I'm doing, these color mixtures, and I'm going pretty fast. And you're like, what? Coming here to the edge, I'm going to just go ahead and taper right off. I'm going to taper it right off, you know, now, like you do. And I'm going to rinse out. Could they substitute Windsor Blue for Prussian Blue? Um, Windsor Blue is Thalo Blue, so if you're using Windsor Blue or Thalo Blue, you may want to just add a little titch, smidge of black to your, to those colors. Oh, okay. To, to make it an equivalent of the Prussian Blue. Gotcha. Just, just a little. So I'm going to take a little of my alizarin and a little of my Indian yellow, and I'm going to come right here in the center and start... Back and forth. This water is so multicolored. You're going to notice that where you're mixing into the purple can go a little gray. And the reason for that is, is that purple and yellow are contrasting colors. But since this is a nighttime effect, that's actually a good thing to have happen in your water. So here we are coming along with this deep color, just on those edge of these bristles, isn't it? Just trucking along. How are we doing on everything, Mr. Cooney? Really good. I'm really enjoying watching this, <laughs> actually. I've been reading. There's a lot of people who are, who are joining us today, you know, and uh, you know, I just want to say hi to everyone. It's been really nice. It's, it, we had a real international crowd here. We've been way over Sherpa for a while. So. Oh, do we need to do a little dance? No, oh, actually, we probably should give you a little dance for you here <laughs> in a little bit. Well, what you, what you you've been you've been cruising along on the water. I'm so. sorry. No, no, we'll let you finish up the water, and then we'll do that. Okay. Not trying to be such a pain. You picked up a little more yellow, and I'm just. Layering out. Now, as I come to this far edge here, yeah. I'm going to get actually into my naphtha again. 
Right. And there's a lot of people doing studies of reds. So this has been. This, this been is used. just a trip, right? Yeah. And that they, they were asking, you may, may want to, you know, they loved the thing on yellows. So maybe we'll do some more on different colors, just some standalone stuff. And they like reds would be very helpful. Yeah. Reds are an interesting, interesting animal. Um, they are, they are, they're fascinating. We're going to come back with a little bit of cadmium in it to create some pops, some color surprise. Right now we're just working this out. Actually, it's a good time to pick up a little bit onto your brush and just add a few bits of it, you know, and again, if you don't have any of the colors, just go ahead and paint it. This is just red on red on red, but we're going to just make sure we've got some of that in there. Some of that heat. Another place I'd like you, while you've got your CAD, because we want a little bit of it in, in our um, Eclipse, is I'm going to come up in this mid space and add just a hint. It's going to almost feel like a fire when we do this. Can you see, like, I'm on the corner of my yeah. brush? Just a hint. I like that. Do you like that? I do. And then we can get to use a little bit of it in our clips, which is going to create some real drama up there. Drama, 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 drama. All right. I am going to come in and a little of my naphthol, or you, actually, I might even grab a little of my CAD in my Indian yellow and come here on this wave. I'm going to just put in this first layer and I'm going to even go over this. I'm going to make sure that there's sort of this color between these two. See what I'm doing there? I'm just working the brush back and forth. Now I can see my blue underneath my very transparent yellow so that lets me even go over it like this. Just making sure everything is covered, and we've got that first layer of glow in the water. Go ahead and feel like you can take your brush stroke even into your sand bank. It's going to just create, as you layer the paint, this sort of fluid flow through. I'm going to sippy sippy, Ooh. and do we have any questions? Well, yeah, I was actually, I was just chatting. I was so sorry, I've been like, do, 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 eclipse, 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 eclipse. You've been doing pretty good. And, uh, hey. Casket favors? Yeah. Your coffee? No. Oh. Bubble me, baby. Oh, yeah. We can totally do bubbles. <laughs> <sighs> and then we can even go in and say, I think. I think we do. Look, we have bubble band. So, for everybody, it's really nice when we get 300 people here. We like to celebrate that we're Sherpa. And that means that we like to get up and dance and wiggle and celebrate life. So if you're at home and you can get up and dance with us and be a Sherpazoid. And remember that if you can't get up and dance, you wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes. Because we always try to remember that we're, being, that we're here to celebrate. <laughs> you like the bubbles? I love the, the bubbles. bubbles back. Clearly, so. I need, they're like, you know how like... Soft kitty on Big Bang. This is like my <laughs> soft kitty on Big Bang. I'm having so, a Sheldon morning. Can you it's, tell? It's, it's been, you know, this has been really cool. I like doing the morning shows. I'm getting attacked by the bubbles. I'm getting attacked by the bubbles. <laughs> but it's kissed, kissed by the bubbles. But we really like having you guys here with us, and this just makes everything worth it. And someone asked uh, earlier what. Uh, what your favorite painting is and uh in I, the world like somebody else did or someone i did i don't know well they were just asking in general oh, uh there's a bunch of paintings that i like um in the world and then of mine mm, i don't know yeah see i like i i, I was <laughs> i just... abandon them when they're done i'm like i'm done with you I had, a, I had a cop-out answer because I like all the ones the community give us. Like, to a T, every time I see a new community painting, I like, I, it, it just makes me happy. And it that's does. He's just uh, all over the social media looking at y'all's art. So, I mean, don't be creeped out. Yeah, it, it's just, you know, it, it, for me, <laughs> it's, it's just, such a crazy looks, thing that we make this show and that other people paint paintings. 
I, I mean, that just every day kind of trips me out. So I really love seeing that. That just blows me away. So that's kind of the thing for me, is that people make paintings with what we do. So <laughs> He does love it. He is stalking you. But don't be, like, in a reasonable way, like, yeah. just in public social media. <laughs> yeah, in, like, that fandom kind of way. In that fandom kind of way. Yeah. So. You know. So it's, it is exciting for us to see you guys share the artwork you do from the show with us. I check Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and Pinterest. And, of course, you can just upload as many paintings as you want to our website. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because we're cool like that. We just give you some art storage. It's just because just... you're awesome. Yeah. And probably need a place to, like, quietly store your artwork. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know how that is. So, the uh, I, I didn't get the traceable up before the show started. So, I'm going to no. get that back up. It, it The the link to the uh, website is in the description below. Yep. So, you can find the traceable and all that kind of stuff. Awesome. So. I'm going to pull out a little naphtha. And I'm going to get a little white. And I'm going to come and I'm going to start putting Whoop. in this uh, glow. Hold on. I get to go up to the glow. So I, I usually start it by on the flat, pulling out a little. Okay. And then I like to take it to the corner of my brush. See, and then pull out a little striation. Right, so flat for around the sun. And I've got just a little white. And you can see they're not mixed together. Yeah. They're just both on the brush, and then as the brush strokes out, some color picks up and... I'm going to get a little, um, maybe some blue mm. and a little of my white. And I like to make, on an eclipse, I like to make some of these go long and some not. I like them to be varied. I don't know if that's science, yeah, but yeah, when I looked it's, at pictures. It's, it's, it, there, there's not very many symmetrical things in stars. I mean, th there are a few I mean, when you talk about, like, the magnetic polarity and, like, pulsars and cool stuff like that. But it's, I mean, this kind of, yeah, the kind of light-emitting stuff you're going to see like this is very much like other things in nature where there's not a lot of pattern. So... Do you have any advice for people who are going to be seeing the eclipse? I'm pulling some more white into this. I just went and grabbed white. Um, who are going to be seeing the eclipse to make that a more enjoyable experience? Because I know you said it was like transformative and life changing. Well, you know, I, I, what I would say is. Uh, it's getting some yellow. You know, uh, no matter where you're at, uh, you know, be safe with your eyes because, uh, you know, no matter, it's not worth the risk of using improper eye, eye gear. And I just can't stress that enough because uh, you won't see the damage that's being done until days or even weeks later. Um, well, that's a little scary. Yeah. I'm getting some CAD for this. So I would say the first and most important thing is make sure you use eye safety. And the second thing is, is uh, enjoy it. So, you know, if you're, especially if you're going to be in the path of totality, don't worry about cameras. Don't worry about anything else. Just stop and watch. Don't worry about live casting it. Just be there. Just be in the moment. Um, because you're only going to get between, you know, two and three minutes of it. And uh, so if you're there, take that time. And just, you know, it's a it's a very rare thing. So what I'm doing here is I'm, if you'll notice, I'm picking up different colors. Mm -hmm. And I have different amounts of white on there. And I'm just trying to create this kind of corona, this, this area around the sun. Um, I might grab a little white hair and pull that in. And what I'm just trying to do is just get some just white. Show that gorgeous gorgeous corona coming out. Mm-hmm. Rinse out. If my if my brush gets muddy or dirty or it stops feeling um bright and light, I'm just taking some pure CAD. Because cadmium paint glows. If you don't have it, you could skip it. Mm -hmm. No problem. Not necessary. I'm getting some Indian yellow and some white. Yeah. And if you're, uh, if, if for whatever reason you're not in the path of totality or you don't have proper eye gear, you can watch it on NASA's live feed. And there's a lot of, a lot of places where you can catch the, the, the eclipse being broadcast and be able to watch it in safety. So... 
you know, uh, but if you are in the path of totality, um, you know, it's worth uh, trying to be in a safe viewing area and experience it in nature. Totally. I'm on the edge of my brush, just brushing out, just brushing out. And when I have this, right, where I feel like I'm happy with how that design is, and it's really, it's a design, I can come back and clean up my edges of my black. Feel like you can really enjoy and play with the eclipse part of the painting. Mm-hmm. You know, spend some time with it and feel good about that. You know, there's no need not to. All right, let's finish out this lower part of the painting. Cool. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little of my uh, alizarin crimson and my Prussian blue again. And if I need it, I'm going to get some glazing medium because my studio is so hot. Mm. I'm going to Ooh. come up this bank. Let me get down there and see what you're doing. Right. And I'm painting my beach in. I'm painting my beach in sort of at an angle. So that it implies that it's coming down. Down, down, down. And again, this is streaky. I'm switching out to a bigger brush. I'm switching out to an eight. This is streaky, and that doesn't bother me because I know I've got layers coming. Mm -hmm. And that makes a big difference. This is the Prussian blue and the alizarin crimson, and I'm just, you can see I'm just brushing this at an angle and taking this down. <laughs> it's such a weird day. Hey, Purple Beach, let's make it, guys. Well, you know, it, it, you get funny casts from the sky as, the, as, the, as it changes. That's so true. I looked at so many pictures, John. I'll tell yeah. you, I looked at a lot of pictures. This is and and uh, this is a is a really popular image because this this you know, uh, you it really captures how the sky changes in this very strange way. Now again, this is a very emotional capturing of an eclipse, but it, it is an emotional. <laughs> I mean, is it accurate because the sky changes in this very dramatic way that. Uh, well, I think sometimes photographers apply filters to their cameras during the eclipse to get some different effects. With well, like the infrared and stuff like that, don't they? Well, I think what it is is that the sun is relatively small in the sky. And uh, the effects that it has, you know, you have to be sort of present to see the entire world change around you. How you can start seeing into space all of a sudden, how the horizon all around you changes, how the mm -hmm. temperature changes, everything changes. It's, um, it's a different place. It is a different place. I'm adding a little white to this mixture that I had over here with the Prussian blue and the lizard crimson. It's still pretty to the crimson, but I'm going to dry brush just a little of this tonality up my beach. You see that there, a little bit of this? Mm -hmm. It's funny, so, so someone was just asking about uh, uh, in, in ancient times, did people go blind watching the eclipse? And and actually, most for most of humanities, I mean, even if you go from people knew not to look at the sun, they knew not to look at the sun. Yeah, <laughs> because it was like even in tribal, that one guy went blind that one time. Well, it, it was a punishment. They would tie people, you know, and and this so they knew very very well that 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 the looking at the sun would blind you. So um, they would use pinhole devices and things like that to be able to view the sun. Um, that's uh, throughout time. That's been. Uh, something that uh you know people have been aware of that you could see the sun by a by a pinhole or a reflection like i am brushing more white into this beach on the angle on the edge of my brush sorry babe oh no no but the way that this was originally captured is that if you ever go stand under a tree during uh, an eclipse you can see little uh little eclipses starting to form on the ground little where the where the sun is being obscured um, and that happens because as it filters through the, the, the leaves of the tree, it makes a pinhole camera. Really? But, yep. It's really just sort of interesting. That's crazy. Yeah. Hey, kids, learn something. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> I, well, I thought that was the cra one of the craziest things I saw when I was first, when I, when I had my first eclipse that I witnessed, is I saw that happening on all the, all the, all the shadows. Now I've got my just naphthol red. Mm -hmm. I'm going to dry brush this down. I can do this if, you're, if your canvas is very wet. You can't really 
dry brush over it. So, you know, touch it and make sure that it's at least fairly dry and, and tacky. And I'm going to just brush this red right over this. Isn't that cool? I don't know if it's cool. It felt cool to me. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it is. I was and then just I'm going to get my small brush out. My small brush, Mr. Cooney. Yes. And I'm going to take a little of my Lizard and Crimson and a lot of my Prussian Blue. They've invoked the Bowie in chat, so I'm just kind of paying attention to what the they're Bowie. The Bowie, yeah. I'm not sure what was specific. They were, they were, I think they were talking about favorite Bowie songs. Oh, so. yeah. All right, so what I'm doing here, and this is a very important part of what you do whenever you're um, painting, mm -hmm. is you've got to put a shadow under the wave. And I'm putting an extreme shadow under this surf that's coming in, right? And I'll come back with, you know, white froth and stuff, but the water is, you know, coming up. It's darkening the sand, right? Yeah, that's a... Now I've added some glaze, and I'm softly on the edge of my brush blending these two fields of paint together. That might be something you might not know to do if you were very, very new, mm -hmm. that you can come to the edge of a brush and just be like, oh... Softly, softly. Yeah, for it's th th one of the reasons why you see all these weird shadows is if you're in the path of totality, uh, you know, again, I, I suggest that you take the minutes before the, the, the total eclipse happens to look around and watch as things change um, because uh, the edges and lines of things. I'm going to do the same thing up at this wave. Yeah, they'll change. They'll look differently. Shadows will look different. It, it will be very interesting for you. And that's why I say just stop and look. I think that's really good advice, babe. Yeah. How are we doing? We're doing really good. I mean, like, everybody in chat's having a great time here. And, uh... uh you this know, shadow is super important. Guys, make sure you get your shadow in under your wave. And see how I'm blending it out? Mm-hmm. Blending it out. I am, like, <laughs> over-caffeinated. Good morning, me. I'm a little hyperactive in the morning. <laughs> John, I'll tell you. I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm a little bit of a handful of hyperactive. No, but this is great. I mean, like, so we're, we're not, at, some people were asking, we are not in the path of totality. We're in Houston. And so we're, we're a bit south for us to be able to get that. So we won't be able to enjoy that this year. And. But with just with school coming up next week and uh, all of that, it was just very difficult for us to be able to plan a, a family road trip. And with Live to Space totality. Week, we're going to have to... totality. Yeah. So I'm we'll rinsing, do it. Rinsing, rinsing. We'll catch the next one. And we're going to get the next we're gonna, one. We're going we're gonna to travel. So what I'm doing is I'm going to take a little of my white over to the Prussian blue. Mm -hmm. And you'll see that makes a really beautiful color. And I'm going to very lightly on the edge of my brush create some uh, highlights here. Like you do. Back into this dark area. Back into this dark area. And I might pull some of it into where my warm is going to be. I'm going to rinse that out. And then I'm going to get a little of... You can take a little... I'm going to get some CAD, like, almost on the corner of my brush, some Indian yellow, and some white. And I'm going to come right here, sort of in the middle, and brush. And I want this to be more yellow. So, like, I'm getting there, and it's, like, a lot of white. I'm going to get some more yellow on my brush. I'm going to come right down the middle here with this color more yellow. There we go. And again, I'm doing this thing on the edge of my brush, not the flat. See, the flat gives me too square of a line. Great for making villages. Not so helpful for water reflections. And you'll notice that I'm not, I'm not making like this sort of even lines. I'm making my lines super uneven. Right? That's what you want to do is make your lines super uneven. I'm going to add a little more white to my brush as I'm coming here. Right up into this wave, I'm going to brush that right up, right up to the lip of that wave. 
a little of that yellow, a little of that white, right up. I don't want to take out my shadow, but I definitely want this highlight. See that there? That's happening? Right along this lip, right here. Highlighted. This is where we have some reflection, and I'm just making sure it's there. And then I'm going to get some naphthol, maybe some of the yellow, and just finish out this side here with the red. A little bit down the way, and if you need to, you can get a little of your alizarin and pull some of that depth into the water off in the distance. Could be helpful. See how I'm doing? Mm hmm So that the water has got, and the thing I've got to check is because sometimes I'm trying to stay out of the camera way, I can't keep myself level. And I get off level, and that throws my water line off. So I'm going to get back and just make sure that I'm on level. So you notice how that my brush strokes are horizontal something very important I've got to keep going and I might bring some of these over here across the top of the horizon line just trying to keep it all level out here yeah I'm gonna have a lot of foliage coming up here but I just want that to be level I'm gonna put a little more Indian yellow there's a lot of eclipse stories going on are there here. yeah lots of people planning on traveling and going this is gonna be really exciting for who's a lot having that shout out the person with the most interesting trip you're seeing oh I, I, let's see uh, uh let's see here there's been a lot of there's past stories so uh so far i think that sue says she's in the path of totality Lori is going to be there i think that kim said that she's 97 percent to, to in totality so she may be driving up to it hi kim uh, hi sue hi Lori. And uh, you know, the, the, there were some questions about when, when the next uh, total eclipse is going to be, and they happen a lot. They just yeah. don't necessarily happen in North America, going all the way across North America the way that this one is. So if you're going to miss it, you can go see other ones. You just may have to travel. <laughs> travel, travel, travel. Yeah, and that could be all over the world. We're <laughs> just super fortunate that this one's going to cross most of the United States. So it's a good opportunity. So I took a little of my Indian yellow and white and added another layer on top of this wave and now I'm coming with a little of my CAD. And you can see I'm creating a little bit of a reflection here. I'm on the edge of my brush. All right, I've still got my nice little shadow and I'm gonna come back one last time with some just pure blue along this wave. Would you see that with just the pure blue? Mm -hmm. Not too heavy of a stroke, but I'm going to come along here. Just the pure blue. Oh, so pretty. Now, here's an interesting thing. I'm going to wipe off my brush. And I'm going to get my white paint. But if you'll notice, because there's pigment on my brush and around it, the white is not white, white. Right. I'm going to pick up a little blue into it. And I'm going to come along here. And right here at the hill, I'm going to brush up a little surf splatter that might happen. And then I'm going to come along the top of this back wave, dabbing my little brush, adding a little foam. Is there a little bit of foam? Yep. A little bit of foam. Where the wave is churning just a small amount. And the foam isn't bright white because it just wouldn't be. You can add a couple little pops of highlighted white. But it just would not be your pure, pure white. Just pulling a little of that. You can get a little blue on your brush if you need it. Isn't that nice? And now that shadow, right, mm -hmm. is totally popping. Yeah, so you it don't really have is. The, the pure white on there, though. Rinse your brush out and come back with just a little bit and add a couple highlights of the just pure white. 
I'm going to put some right here at the front of the wave, a couple spots, not everywhere. Just a couple spots. And guess what I get to finish with? What's that? I get to do my palm trees, yeah. which is super looking, exciting. This is looking really, really so sharp. We're nearly done. Now, I'm going to take a little of my um, Prussian blue to my black, and I'm going to mix those together so that it's not just pure, pure black, even though at first it'll seem like it is. And I'm going to come in and paint in the base for my hill. All right. Let's take this down just a little bit. I'm coming on the edge of my brush. Just pulling the hill to the back here. Paint that in. We're going to come back with some grasses to integrate this to part of its world. So it'll feel like right now that's a hard edge, that's a weird edge. But what happens is, is we'll come back and we'll brush down. See this brush stroke? I'm mm -hmm. brushing in some grasses. It's okay that I picked up some white there, it doesn't hurt it, because we're going to be coming back. We want this to have some organic kind of matter. I'm going to get my brush loaded up with some black. I'm going to come here in this mid spot. You can do this with chalk first, and I'm going to come down and then bend back towards the hill. Because palm trees do a lot of bending, don't they? Mm hmm. And then as I'm coming to the hill, I'm thickening the trunk. These palm trees are thicker at the base than they are at the tip. And if I need to, if my brush is glumpy, see how it's a little glumpy? I'm going to wipe it off and reload. And I like to start with a palm frond that comes down like this. And I feel like it should have a little friend here to the right and to the side. Then this one should curve the opposite way. Maybe a little shorter friend right here. I'm going to bring a little short friend up here, longer friend, short friend. Once I have this crazy prongy looking event, I'm going to just feather down this stroke. Look at this stroke. I'm just feathering it down. Feather, 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 feather. It tapers. It comes near the end of the palm tree. I might add a little feather on this side. Feather, feather, feather. See how I'm making that feather? On the edge of my brush, pulling it out, feathering it out. Feather, 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 feather. Feather, 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 feather. So the two sides are feathered. Like hair from the late 70s, early 80s. Feather those palm trees. Mm -hmm. Pulling those little those little bits out. Some of these are shorter because they're in perspective, right? They're foreshortened. Yeah. And that gives our palm tree, even though it's in silhouette, some real nice shape and form. Right? I'm not... And you don't have to be perfect. Sometimes you're going to feel really stressed out during a silhouette process, which is why it's always okay to do it in chalk first. Feather, 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 feather. Feather, feather, feather. Now, what am I not doing? I'm not going like this, am I? If I was pressing hard, that's what I would be getting. You'd be getting little, little branch yeah. edges. You'd be getting little branch edges. So I'm going to come on the edge. You can see just the dust of my brush. And I'm even going to fix this little palm frown that I over thickened. Look at that. So everything's fixable in acrylic paint. Don't feel trapped or freaked out. Feather, feather. And a lot of it is about the pressure. Pressing too hard, and I'm going to get sort of these thick, chunky lines which is great when I want them and not ideal when I don't. Feather, 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 feather. It can help to say the word. Feather, and this feather, is a feather, soft feather, feathering, feather, yeah? Feather. Very soft feathering. I'm kissing the canvas. Now, paint can dry on my brush as I'm painting, so sometimes it's good to rinse out and come back. This palm tree is a little straighter. It's gonna, some of it's going to be off the canvas. 
something I'm doing. So one of the things I do when I'm trying to get a steady line, I don't paint from the back of the brush because that would not give me a steady line. That would give me a loose expressive line. I anchor with my pinky, right? And I, trying to explain what I'm doing, it's messing up what I'm doing. See mm -hmm. how the pinky helps me anchor? Gives you a little guiding. It gives me a little guide. It straightens and steadies my hand. Just something, you know, you might not see when someone is painting that they're doing. This only works because my canvas is dry right now. That'd be terrible method if my canvas were wet. <laughs> Dragging your pinky through the wet paint. Right through the wet paint. Yeah, not that that's never happened to me before, and I've been like totally Homer Simpson. We're like, don't, don't. This would be hard to do, harder to do that with oil, too, probably. <laughs> not happening in oil. You're going to have to use like a real like pounce bridge or something. Feather, 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 feather. Let's put some. Maybe one there. Short little do there. There we go. Some palm fronds. The great thing about palm trees is they're kind of all like so personality that you can get away with just a lot with them. And they still look pretty good. And you guys do some amazing palms. I've seen your palms. Mm -hmm. And you guys sort of rock those out. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Ooh. Feather, 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 feather. Feather, 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 feather. On the edge of that brush. That's how I'm doing it. Flicking that. So I plant the stroke and then flick it out. See? And I'm just using the edge of the bristles there. And this is just about confidence with my tool. That's all it is. Sometimes we think we're not good at painting and it's just we're not yet confident with our tools. Mm -hmm. But we're actually quite good at painting. We're just having a tool moment. And we're not a tool. We're just having a tool. It's about experience. I'm going to do the same thing to create grass. Look at me. Oh. Now, one of the things that I like to do with my grass, right, when I'm creating the grass, is I like to make sure that whatever is happening on my little hill here, it feels affected by the wind and the elements around it. So the forces that are creating waves will also impact the grass. I'm going to bring these right over this little corner here. Look at that. Seaming that in to the world where it's at. A little grassy knoll. Now, a little blue. I haven't rinsed out my brush, right? So there's black on it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add a little white to that. So I get this blue black right here up front. Let's put in a little grass. Maybe a little bit there. A couple places, right? Little grasses. Look at this grass. Just a hair lighter than its background. A little more blue. Come up on this front grass. Look at that. Look how that gives that whole space tons of depth. Yeah. Just right there. Now, on my fronds, I can do the same thing. I can come down the middle of a frond, right, like on the edge, and just very lightly add a bit of a highlight to what's happening underneath. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Yeah. That's a lot more dimensionality than your just regular silhouette. Yeah, people are loving that blue, black, gray color. Oh, it's just the best. Prussian blue, black, and white is just the best. I'm coming along the front edge, my palm to help it pop. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Just a little bit. If you take out too much of your black, just come back and put in your black. It's not like a pass fail kind of thing. Feather, 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 feather. feather, feather. Just and some highlights. And this is really a one hoop painting. Yeah? yeah, it is. It's the high one hoop, but we're still one hoop. It's a very low two hoop, but it's going to get put in the one hoop playlist. Yeah. All right. So once we have that, 
if you need to put in your black anywhere, like I got a little over zealous with my blue right there, look, I can just trim that line right back. Not a problem, is it? Yeah. What is there left to do, Mr. Cooney? That is pretty, you got to sign it. I got to sign it. That is pretty you exciting. You got to yeah. sign it. We totally did a fantasy tropical. This is the totality beach painting mm -hmm. that we did. I'm going to be, I don't want to sign it in just um, white. So I'm going to take a little of my yellow over there. I might even get a little of my red. Because I want it to show up, but I don't want it to just be white. You know what I'm saying? I do. I just white. So I'm going to come here on the edge. I like my signatures to show, but not be so garish or big that they're disruptive to the painting. <gasps> We're signed! This is super exciting. I can't believe you got to do this with me. I hope you just loved painting your eclipse in this fantasy beach, your totality beach. <sighs> Sorry, I was like a little hyperactive this morning, a little coffee, a little early in the no, day. It's, it's going to be like exciting. this all week. I love you, babe. I love you too. Now we have, we're, we're, pre we're pretty, it's pretty exciting here because we're, we're like 20 people away, 20 subs away from, from, from hitting our 200,000. So we're going to go, we're going to, we're going to shut this one down and then we're going to go, we're going to go live Can here. You real bubble me, baby? We're going to, oh yeah, I can bubble you. So we're going to go live here in just about uh, a minute or two. So we love you guys. We're going to see you live. Just hang out here. We'll be right back. All right.